It's been about a decade since Alabama ventured into the medical marijuana industry with a law to study CBD oil. And three years since, the governor has signed a law allowing for medical marijuana for certain patients. But those patients still are not able to get the medicine because of a legal fight raging in Montgomery over how the licenses are awarded to businesses that produce and distribute the drug. Our Brendan Kirby is joining us now in studio with the very latest on this. Brendan, are we closer to seeing a resolution. Well, it's hard to tell, Anise and Shelby. A Montgomery County Circuit Judge last week issued a temporary restraining order to stop licenses. A patient advocacy group today asking the judge to intervene in that litigation to get this process going. Ray French has been on both sides of Alabama's tortured efforts to launch a medical marijuana industry. His companies, Specialty Medical Products and Ocity Labs, initially lost out on one of the limited number of licenses to grow, ship, and sell the drugs. A judge found fault with how the Alabama Cannabis Commission awarded those licenses. When the commission tried again in December, its third attempt to get it right, Ocity came out a winner. But the legal process that benefited French is now preventing him from processing marijuana grown in Atmore at the Ocity Labs facility in Foley. We've got infrastructure ready. Uh, we're, we're, we're sitting here uh, absolutely ready to make these products right away, right now, and can't get them to the patients. Cultivators have been growing the plant, but the medicine can't be processed and delivered until the latest litigation is resolved. Some doctors who would like patients to be able to have medical marijuana say they're frustrated. Mobile doctor Marshall Walker says his own mother used marijuana illegally when she was battling cancer. I can't certify a patient to use cannabis until there's a dispensary open. That's the verbiage in the law. So opening these things is the only way to implement the law that the people quite frankly wanted and they deserve. Amanda Taylor of the Patients Coalition for Medical Cannabis in Alabama says she suffers from seven different debilitating medical conditions. She says she became a medical refugee forced to move to another state to get treatment she needed. Now back in Alabama, she estimates more than 54,000 people in the state would benefit from medical marijuana in the first year. This um, obstructionary lawsuits has literally crushed me. Um, it's, there's so much needless suffering and it's all due to greed. Will Somerville, an attorney for Alabama Always, says the commission awarded licenses to companies that didn't even have facilities. The fact is that my client invested a lot of money in a state-of-the-art facility and the commission has never explained why my client didn't get a license. My client satisfies all the requirements. My client may be the only one that satisfies all the requirements of the Cannabis Act. Mike Ball, a former state representative who sponsored the cannabis legislation, says he doesn't have a great explanation for why the legislature capped the number of this type of license at five. Well, that's an arbitrary number. There was nothing magic about five. There was nothing magic. You know, just because people win an election don't mean that they know everything. State Senator David Sessions of Grand Bay attempted to break the law jam in this past legislative session. He sponsored a bill that would have increased the number of licenses, but that bill didn't pass. Reporting live from the News Center, Brendan Kirby, Fox 10 News.